Welcome to the fifth part of my Adobe Lightroom Classic Masterclass. In this part, we'll take a look at how to correct your image. So that means noise reduction, sharpening, uh, some lens corrections, and there is no such thing as a perfect lens in this world. Now, some lenses are better than others, but there is no 100% perfect lens. They all have some flaws, and we can correct those flaws inside of Lightroom. So for example, your lens might not be very sharp, there might be a lot of barrel distortion or vignetting in the corners, or you might have a lot of noise depending on the camera that you're using and the conditions you're shooting in so we can correct all of those in Lightroom. So scrolling down to the detail panel is where we can do sharpening and noise reduction to our photo. Now by clicking on this little arrow here you can see a small preview of the photo. You can click on it to zoom in and just click and drag to move around the image. Now, as you can see, there is a bit of sharpening added already to my image, and that is because I'm working with a RAW file, and Lightroom automatically applies a bit of sharpening to RAW files. But if you'd have a JPEG, so for example, this one has a sharpening amount of zero because it's a JPEG and not a RAW file. Now, the reason for this is that RAW images are never sharpened in camera, but JPEGs are, so Lightroom thinks you don't need to add any more sharpening to a JPEG, which is usually true, but you might need to add some sharpening to a RAW photo to make it look sharp. Now you might not even need to tweak any of these settings if you think your photo looks good so you don't have to worry about this if you don't want to if you think your photo is sharp enough already but if you want to tweak the sharpening first of all you can tweak the sharpening amount so it's just basically how much sharpening Lightroom will apply so if I just zoom in here because I don't like this small preview because it's really <laughs> so small so I'll just close it down and zoom into the actual image so you can see what sliding the sharpening slider does. Now YouTube will compress this video quite a lot, so you might not be able to see it as well, but just test out with your own photos and you really see how sharpening affects your photos. Now sharpening is also one of those things that you don't want to overdo because an over sharpened image will look bad as well. So I usually find a value of around 80 to work pretty well. So I'll just leave it at 85 for this tutorial now. And next up we have radius. So the way the sharpening process works is Lightroom looks for edges in your image and then sharpens those edges and the radius determines the area around that edge that Lightroom will sharpen. So a lower radius will only sharpen the image right around an edge and a larger radius will expand the area Lightroom will sharpen around the edge. So a larger radius will sharpen a bigger area and a smaller radius will sharpen a smaller area. Now if you hold down Alt on Windows or Option on a Mac you can see a black and white or a grayscale image that will better give you a representation of what the radius does for your image. So find a spot where you think this looks good. So I found somewhere around one and a half to work pretty well for this image. So I'll leave it at 1.4. And I often actually find a value of between one and two to work pretty well, often around the one and a half mark, which was actually also the case for this photo. Now, next up we have detail and detail will tell Lightroom how small of an edge it should start sharpening and a larger value in the detail slider will make Lightroom add more detail sharpening even the thinnest of edges Lightroom can find and a smaller detail amount will only look for larger edges to sharpen. So basically, the higher your detail value is, the sharper your image will look like. Now here also, if you hold down Alt or Option and drag the slider, you get a different overlay to see what you're actually doing to your image. And I find these grayscale images to work pretty well for the sharpening to see what you're actually doing. Now you can play around with this as much as you want to, but I usually leave it at the default 25 and just play with the sharpening amount. I don't know if that's the best way to do it, but I've never had any issues. Now also going too high with the detail, will actually start to sharpen the noise that you have in your image. So if you go too high, your image might start to look noisier. Now the last but definitely not least with sharpening is the masking. So with masking you can mask out areas in the photo that you don't want to sharpen. So Lightroom will look for large areas of a similar texture and not sharpen that area because it thinks that area should not be touched with the sharpening and it will only focus on the actual edges of objects. So for example if you have a large sky with the masking you can mask out the sky so that Lightroom doesn't start to sharpen the noise in our sky. Because there is no reason for us to sharpen the actual sky because there's really no detail in there that we would want to have sharpened so it's better to just mask out the sky with the masking. Now the best way to see what you're masking out is once again holding down Alt or Option and dragging the slider. And here the white parts will get sharpened and the black parts won't. So if masking is at zero everything will be sharpened and at 100 
only the finest details with the edges will get sharpened. Now, even though it is always a good idea to sharpen your images a bit to make them look better, I don't think this is something you should really worry about too much. An image might look really, really good without any sharpening as well. And especially if you're viewing your photos on a phone, they'll be so small that the sharpening doesn't really matter as much. If you're printing out large prints of your photos, then sharpening matters a lot more, but still I would not worry too much about sharpening because I've never heard anyone complain about under sharpening an image, but I have heard a lot about over sharpening. So I don't think you should worry too much about just sharpen your photos a bit, but don't overdo it and you'll be fine. Now, next up in the detail panel, we have noise reduction and the denoise button has a pretty good explanation below it. So it will reduce noise with AI and the results will be saved as a new DNG file. Now the AI denoiser is incredibly good, but I wouldn't use it on photos that don't have too much noise because it can be quite slow and heavy on your computer. So I would just use the manual noise reduction. So if you don't see it, open it up with this little arrow. Now there are two types of noise in an image. One is color noise and one is luminance noise. So once again with RAW files, Lightroom automatically has a bit of color noise reduction going on. And this is because color noise are those random ugly colorful pixels that you get with cheap digital cameras. So Lightroom wants to get rid of those straight away. Now luminance noise on the other hand is black and white and it's not quite as ugly. So Lightroom doesn't apply any luminance noise reduction by default, but it still can make your image look really ugly if there's too much of luminance noise in your image. So so it's a good idea to remove it here. Now the amount of noise reduction you want is controlled with the luminance slider and the color slider. Now obviously the luminance slider will remove the luminance noise and the color slider will remove the color noise. Now you can also tweak the detail and the contrast for the luminance noise. The detail slider will make sure you aren't losing any detail while reducing noise from your image as noise reduction may actually end up softening your image quite a bit. So the higher you go with the detail slider, the more detail you are preserving in your image. But having the detail slider too high may end up creating some weird artifacts for your image. So keep an eye out for those. And then we have the contrast slider. So reducing noise may also reduce some of the contrast in your image. So you can use the contrast slider to bring that contrast back. I usually only work with the luminance slider because I think it gives a good enough result for my images. But if you need to, you can use the detail and the contrast sliders. But personally, I always leave them at the default values. Now with the color noise, I actually usually bump this up quite a bit from the default value because I don't want to have any color noise in my image because that tends to look very, very ugly and cheap. Now the detail slider is a exactly the same as with the luminance noise reduction and the smoothness slider actually also does pretty much the same thing just in a bit of a different way. And the same thing with the color noise reduction. I never touch the detail or the smoothness sliders at all. I just play with the color slider because I think that works well enough for me. And now that we have removed the noise and sharpened our image, we get to the lens corrections tab. And in most cases, Lightroom will actually recognize the lens you used for taking the photo. And these options might already be checked. But if they're not, just check them and you have now corrected all the issues with your lens. So the chromatic aberration means those weird purple or green edges around usually shiny objects or things like metal poles or very bright objects. And the enable profile corrections will correct the distortion and the vignetting of your image. So distortion means the bending of your image around the edges. So your edges might get bent a bit and vignetting is the dark corners of your image. Now, if you want to fix these issues, but not completely get rid of them, you can tweak these sliders to adjust the amount of correction Lightroom applies. For example, I usually like to have a bit of vignetting in my images to emphasize the subject of my image. So I would take down the vignetting just a bit, but I usually leave the distortion at 100 always. Now the amount of issues your lens has will depend a lot on the lens that you're using. So for example, cheap lenses and especially cheap zoom lenses will have a lot more issues than expensive lenses or especially expensive prime lenses. Some of the best lenses out there have pretty much no issues at all, but some lenses might be extremely bad. Now, if Lightroom doesn't recognize the lens, you may try to find it through the menu here. Or if you can't find the lens in these menus, you can just go to the manual tab and correct the lens issues manually. So distortion will kind of bend the image so that you can correct your distortion. And if we go too far, we get these white edges so we can get rid of those with the constraint prop option. And this will make sure you're only showing the actual image and nothing outside of the frame of the image. Now, if we deselect this, we're actually cropped in in the crop panel. So if you want to reset the distortion, always remember to reset the crop as well, because you might get cropped into your photo. Now defringing is basically correcting the chromatic aberrations of your photo. So for example, these poles or these masts might have some chromatic aberration around them or these 
really bright boats could have some as well. So I could just take the eyedropper tool and then click on the chromatic aberration part and Lightroom would do the rest of the job automatically. Now if for some reason that does not work, you can also use these sliders to correct the chromatic aberration. But usually the eyedropper would work if there's any issues so you don't have to worry about these sliders basically at all ever. Now when it comes to the vignetting, I can just correct the vignetting in here if there's any vignetting in my photo. So you can change it to be brighter or darker around the edges. So usually you would want to have a brighter edge with the vignetting correction and then you can change the midpoint as well if you need to. So this will take the amount of vignetting correction that you do and push it closer to the center or further away from the center of the image if you need to. But as I said earlier, Lightroom will usually recognize the lens that you used and you'll be fine with just clicking those two boxes and you'll be good to go. Next up after the lens corrections we have the transfer panel where we can make lines straight basically. So the upright tool will correct the perspective of your photo. The automatic usually works quite well but not quite perfectly so you can try if it works but if it doesn't you can use the guided version of upright so click on this little box here that will open up the guided tool now let's say this beach would be straight so i can draw a line around there and then also these buildings should be in a straight line so let's draw a line around there and now lightroom will correct the perspective according to these lines now you need to have at least two lines, either one vertical and one horizontal or two verticals or two horizontals or you can also have four lines so two verticals and two horizontals but you will need to create at least two lines to be able to create an upright correction. And here as well we have the constraint crop option so that we're not showing any white parts out of the image and now our image should be straightened perfectly if we put those guidelines on a straight surface. If you need to you can also use the sliders here but I always find the guided version of upright to work perfectly so there's never been any need for me to use this but if you need to you can even further tweak the perspective of your image with these sliders but I don't think you would ever need to. Now I'm just going to reset everything here in the transform panel and then remember to reset my crop as well because we had the constraint crop and that will crop in with the crop tool as well. Now there is one more thing that I want to talk about in this video and that is the effects panel. So in here you can add things back that you actually corrected from your image. So you can add a vignette here with all of these different tools or tweaks to the vignette and you can also add some grain to your image so if you want to have that filmic noise or grain in your image you can add it right here and you can also change the size and the roughness of the grain. So if you want to have the vintage look with the grain you can do it here but I would never do the vignette here because there's a lot better way to do it with masks but we'll get to that later on in this tutorial series. And that concludes the fifth part of my Lightroom Classic Master class. If there's any questions that you have about this just drop a comment down below and I'll do my best to help you out. And in the next part we'll take a look at masking which is also extremely powerful for editing your photos. So I'll see you in the next part.